You are listening to the Anxiety Podcast, where we support you to overcome anxiety and reduce stress. We will get vulnerable and it will be real. Here's your host, Tim J.P. Collins. We are back. Welcome to the Anxiety Podcast. Today, I'm so excited. I've got something to share with you that I've uh, tried out recently, uh, an exercise, if you will, although not a physical exercise, more of a mental exercise, which I very much enjoyed. I can't wait to share it with you in a moment. Before I do that, if you're new to the podcast, head on over to anxietypodcast.com. Click on the free tab and you can sign up to get the Lean In Anxiety Guide, which will walk you through my various methods of uh, yeah, leaning into anxiety and starting to feel better. There's also a five-week course on there as well. And My group coaching is kicking off again in September, September 4th. I just uh, announced this earlier in the week and I've I've got the first few people sign up already. Um, Yeah, so as I, a couple of questions that I've been getting through email, it will be a small group. I want everybody to have the chance to contribute and talk. So it's going to be small. It's going to give lots of time for you to have your say, etc. You'll be able to email in questions kind of during the break in between sessions if there's things you want me to answer, for instance, but you don't want to talk about on the phone, that's totally fine, or on the video call. Um, Yeah, so that's kind of how it will work. Duration was the other question I got often. Duration is usually 60 minutes, although when I've done it in the past, because I love to talk, it can go on to up to sort of, you know, 75, 90 minutes even. If somebody's mid-flow, and I'm mid-flow, and we're making tremendous progress, then I'm not going to cut it off just because it's time. I always pad it out. So I've got a bit more time before and after. So if you want to find out more about that, just go to anxietypodcast.com and click on the group coaching tab. Um, When it's full, I will take that link down or I'll just put sold out on it. And then from then moving forward, it'll be a kind of uh, one in one out type scenario just to keep the, the group the right size. Okay. Today's content. I'm reading this book at the moment called Playing With Fire. Um, which is something I'm always interested in um, with regard to financial independence. FIRE stands for financial independence, retire early. Um, Some people sort of focus more on the FI aspect of that, which is just financial independence because they love their job like I do and I don't necessarily want to retire early in the working sense. Maybe work a bit less and maybe be a bit more picky, but maybe spend a bit more time doing this. But uh, yeah, it's that's kind of what that means. Anyway, Scott... Uh, Rekins, I think is is how you pronounce the um, the author's name for this one, and uh, it's a very cool book because it looks like it it says playing with fire, and then down the spine of the book, it's got kind of that um, that material that they put down inside a box of matches. So I just think that that looks really cool. Anyway, a lot of it talks about concepts I already know, um, you know, things that I've talked about on the podcast before around minimalism and, and and kind of understanding where you need to be financially and all those sorts of things. But there was an exercise in there where um, the main person who wrote the book, Scott, was trying to convince his wife that they should uh, move house and live a bit more frugally so they could get to their financially independent target sooner. And f- financial independence, just to kind of recap, essentially means that um, you generate more money uh, income wise from or from passive income than your expenses cost per month. So if you stop going to work or got fired from your job, you could uh, continue to buy food and pay rent or pay mortgage or whatever else you got to do. I, I'm making this podcast on uh, on the on the morning when they just uh, are introducing interest rate hikes uh, again. So uh, it's, it's interesting time to think about money. But anyway, uh, yeah. So that's essentially. What it means is you have more money in passive income than your expenses are. Therefore, if you stop working, everything's fine. And then therefore working becomes optional. That's really all it is. So the exercise in this book that I enjoyed and I got uh, my wife to do, and I actually, did I bring it with me? Yes, I got the, my list in my pocket so I can read that out to you. Let me pull it out of my pocket. There we go. Um, so it's, a, it's the 10 things exercise. That's what we're talking about, the 10 things exercise. And I'll read a little bit from the book here. We all have a limited amount of time on earth, and so much of that time gets taken up by either trying to earn money or spending the money we earn. But what do you actually want to be doing with your time? What do you actually enjoy doing? What is the best possible use of your time? The 10 things exercise is simple but powerful. 
Make a list of 10 things you most enjoy doing on a weekly basis. You can also use a month as a time frame, but I like using a week. A typical day is too busy and full of tasks, and a month allows too much time for excessive plans and spendy ideas. What you spend your weeks doing is really what you spend your life doing, and that's what makes the exercise so insightful. If you're doing this with a partner, try not to compare your list until you've finished. Once you're finished, reflect on what you've written. What do you notice about these 10 activities? Is there a pattern or a theme? What's not included? Extra credit. Make a list of 10 things you spend the most money on every month and compare it to the list of your 10 favorite activities. Are you spending your money on things you actually enjoy? <clears throat> I didn't do that part, to be honest, but uh, the thing I spend most money on every month is probably rent. But um, And after that, uh, food, which I do enjoy food. I do. But um, yeah, so really the, the catalyst for this conversation was... Um, they needed to make some changes in their life. In this case, Taylor, the, his wife, um, really didn't want to give up her BMW to work towards financial independence because she loved her car and, and it cost a decent amount of money every month. But when she wrote her list, she wrote things like hearing my baby laugh, having coffee with my husband, cuddling with my baby, going for a walk, going for a bike ride, enjoying a glass of wine, good chocolate, talking to my parents and family, having family dinners and reading to my baby. None of those, with the exception of wine and chocolate, cost any money. And yet, and those are the the favorite things we enjoy doing. And yet now to talk generally again, most of us spend a lot of time, you know, generating money to spend it, you know, spend a lot of time at work generating money. So you, you trade your lifetime for money uh in a in a time for money exchange you might get paid by the hour you might get paid by commission it doesn't really matter you're working for a time to get paid unless you're one of the lucky few who created a famous song or a jingle and every time it gets played you get paid that's amazing i'm very uh envious of that that's kind of the dream um create a jingle and get paid every time to play on the radio lovely somebody somebody's got that luxury but for the rest of us mere mortals, we usually go to work and do things and get paid. And whether you're, you know, you get salaried or commissioned or whatever, in my case, I'm commission based for my for my job. You can then reverse engineer and divide the amount of commission you get in a month by the amount of hours you spent talking to people and prospecting and showing houses and doing all these things. So you can still get back to what it costs for an hour of your time. Um, and so, if we are trading our time for money, and then we're spending that money on you know, new cars, bigger houses, more expensive stuff, bigger TV, um, then, you know, are we really, are we really uh, aligned with the things that we enjoy most? And I would guess probably not. If you had on your top 10 list, what's one of your favorite things, looking at brand new cars, <laughs> then we might have a problem. But uh, it wasn't on mine. I'll share a couple of uh, I share a couple of mine. Uh, a couple of my wife's was was really time with family, coffee, dog walks, uh, poke bowls because she loves the those that type of food. Swimming in the ocean, talking to friends, eating fruit, um, all some of those things. Mine included um, sitting and talking to Steph, my wife, about life and and you know drinking lots of tea. Um, Working out with my sons was one of the ones that came up on my list um, because I think that's just such good quality time and we're getting healthy and, and stronger at the same time. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Um, spending time creating for the podcast and learning about stuff through podcasts and reading. So that I put that in a whole sort of personal growth category uh, and helping other people, which obviously through you know things like the group coaching and and just putting the podcast out is is definitely in place. Um, learning about investing, I've just been doing a lot of that lately. While I've been trying to work towards getting my finances organised, I feel that I probably started a little bit late in life in terms of uh, getting on this investing train. Um, I love going to the movies, to the cinema, so that does cost a bit of money, but not a lot in the bigger scheme of things. Not as much as a car. Uh, I also love swimming in the ocean, talking to my friends, family dinners, hosting friends, yeah, having having people over for drinks and barbecues and stuff, all those sorts of things. So that's, you know, that's really 
that's really it in a, in a nutshell, the 10 things exercise. If you to sit there and write down the 10 things that you most enjoy in life or bring you the most happiness in life, if you want to look at it a different way and, and really, you know, spend some time questioning those. It turns out my wife and, and my list are fairly similar, although not exactly the same, but they overlap in a number of ways, which is a positive thing. If we wanted, you know, diametrically different things, then that may mean we're not as compatible as we thought for 20 years. But, um, yeah, so that's kind of the, the point is to, to really, um, do the exercise, write your things down, reflect on it. Uh, and then a couple of things you can do afterwards. The conclusion is you can sit there and say, am I doing these things as frequently as I would like to? Am I prioritizing the things I enjoy most in my life? Number one. And then number two is where am I spending the money that's stopping me do more of this sooner? Because if you didn't have to work as hard or as long, you could then obviously do more of the things that bring you happiness and joy in your life. There's a study that was done many years ago and is probably out of date now due to inflation, but they say things like um, the, the, the amount of money that brings you the most happiness is something like $75,000. And beyond $75,000 or let's say $100,000, uh, uh, your happiness doesn't really in increase that much. You just make more money. So that's kind of, you know, the point is like if we're continuing to search for more money all the time and, and trade that time to get more money, which is stopping us doing the things we enjoy most, then we have a bit of a, a bit of a problem here. And one of the calculations they did in the book, they said, look, if he sat down and did the numbers and said, look, if we get rid of the BMW and the car payments, I can actually retire a year and a half earlier. So think about all those experiences of laughing with the baby and eating chocolate and drinking wine and spending time together and walking and swimming in the ocean and stuff. Um, a year and a half more of those is a significant amount of life time, life energy, and a significant amount of those experiences. So is it worth giving up, albeit the nice shiny sports car, to have a year and a half more of those experiences? Absolutely. Decision made. Job done, right? So anyway, I, uh, I wanted to share that with you. I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, if you are a fan of the Anxiety Podcast, uh, thank you so much for listening. Please go to spotify or amazon or apple or wherever you can leave a review and, and leave a review for the show it helps me um get the word out makes me feel good and uh is, is super easy to do also you can buy me a cup of tea on the website uh anxietypodcast.com it, it says buy tim a cup of tea and it takes you over to uh, a website there where you can you can buy me a cup of tea and, and support the show. I don't usually actually literally buy tea with it, but it has been known. Sometimes I just pay the, uh, the, the podcast hosting fees with it. But thank you so much for listening. And remember, until next time, less anxiety, more life. Thank you for listening to the Anxiety Podcast. For more information, go to theanxietypodcast.com.